it's my um, privilege now to introduce um, Professor Homan Tutongi. Um, he is from the Center for African Studies at UCT. He holds the NRF Research Chair in Land Reform and Democracy in South Africa. And his research is really focused on the political economy of access to and use of land and water, strategies around poverty alleviation and alternatives to growth in Africa's growth. Yeah, thanks very much for that. Um, so I'll be speaking today about the uh, two, I want to explore two um, concepts, the concept of affordability burden uh, in the context of equity. Uh, equity, we are probably more familiar with it, with the uh, employment equity concepts at UCT. Um, um, but the affordability burden, uh, maybe not so uh, familiar in the context of water, uh, access to water. The starting point where I want to start the discussion is the, the, the importance of water has been widely recognized and um, in different uh, um, uh, uh, forums, uh, uh, you know, and uh, you know, the basic point, of course, being that water uh, is a basic uh, requirement for human, uh, for leading a life in human dignity, but also just for survival. So it's a very basic uh, resource that we have and therefore very important and it should be treated as a special resource. The, um, one of the you know, uh, sort of broader recognition of water uh, comes from the, uh, the, the, the UN um, Council for Economic, Social and Cultural Rights that in, 20, in 2002 declared water as a human right. And they argue that uh, water is fundamental to the fulfillment of other basic rights. That if you can't meet, uh, uh, you can fulfill your right to water, it's probably, it's possible or most likely that you won't fulfill other rights, like the right to freedom of expression, including probably the, 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 the right to life. So it's very fundamental. The other recognition comes from the South African constitution that uh, in 26, 20, uh, section 27, and that's a direct quote, that everyone has a right to have access to uh, the water as put together with food. But, uh, so that's, um, and we have, uh, we don't have much debate there. It's very clear that uh, water is very essential and uh, as, as human beings, we should all be entitled to that. And, and that's where the question of equity comes into uh, question when we speak about affordability and of course the affordability burden. Um, but, that, but accessing that water comes at a cost, uh, especially if it's treated water, that there, there's a cost to it. And we are familiar with the cost of treating water, but there are other costs that come with accessing water. Um, most of them are invisible to us. And this is why I want to speak about those invisible costs or invisible burdens. We, we, we often associate the, the cost with you know, the bills we pay, but there are other costs that come, and I'll, I'll speak to that just in a moment. The, the invisible burdens, particularly for poor uh, uh, households, and we'll see just uh, as we go uh, in, the, in, in the presentation, the, invisi the, the, the burden could be financial, but also can be non-financial. Uh, um, and the, the burden of accessing water often not recognized, and the poor, in the context of equity, the poor bear a disproportionate, uh, um, 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 disproportionately higher burden or, you know, when accessing water. And often, again, in the gender context, uh, uh, when it comes to water, um, it's mostly women who bear the highest or the disproportionately higher burden, and we'll see that. Um, in terms of just um, um, equity, if you are receiving water, you know, in, in that context, in terms of affordability, we ask for affordability for whom? And there are two levels of affordability. There's affordability for the service provider and, this, and affordability for the consumer or customer. Uh, for the service provider, you've got to get the water from its natural environment, you've got to treat it, Got to lay the pipes, and, and that comes at a cost as well. So the, the, there is that element of affordability. And what's emphasized at that level of affordability is often the idea of um, 
efficiency and sustainability of, 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 of that service. But also there's affordability at the consumer level in the sense that um, you, you, you know, the people using the services, uh, you know, they, they need, they, 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 they access that at a cost. Um, and, and, and I'll speak to some of those costs as we go. Uh, what we, um, and so in terms of the service provider, the, the, um, the, the, the affordability um, has implication on the sustainability of the service uh, itself. Uh, in the sense that uh, several other you know, factors need to be taken into account to ensure that there is affordability in the system. If we have ins insufficient finance, it will lead to poor maintenance and that can lead to the system itself getting you know, in a bad situation and then that results into poor service that affect customers and, and, and that could lead to uh, affordability resulting into low income. So there is that uh, circle of uh, factors that, uh, that, that, that go into play. Uh, but what I want to focus on is, what I want to focus on is the affordability burden and the equity. Um, the, concept, the concept of affordability, uh, a burden itself draws from the principle of equity. Um, and the, um, the, 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 the UN Council on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights uh, defines uh, the principle of equity as you know, different from the principle of equality as you know, that uh, it demands that we pay more attention. Sorry. The, the point with the equity principle is that we treat people uh, are not as the same depending on where they are we should not um, uh, impose a disproportionately higher, and, and that's, that's, that's the point that the ratio that of the burden that falls on households should be at least uh, uh, be equalized. And, and I like this, um, um, you know, uh, this, this picture here illustrating the principle of e e equity in the sense that if, if the two uh, if, if the two were asked to reach the level of the pencil without the assistance, you can see the other child is standing on a stool. To, uh, and, and, and if they, were, if they remove that stool, the, the, this fellow here won't be able to reach the same level of the pencil. And, and the idea is that the, the, there's support. There's support for someone and there's, support for, for the, there's no support for the other person uh, uh, to equalize or to, uh, to, in order to arrive at the principle of equity. The principle of equality will be a level balance, like a scale, where you know, all the same, uh, you, you, everybody weighs the same. But if we do that here, this will be actually in uh, 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 a disadvantaged position. So, uh, and in accessing water, we, we, we also follow the same principle that uh, we pay more attention to those who suffer or who carry, who carry the, the highest burden. Um, and we focus more uh, uh, on, uh, we should be focusing on that, although in practice it's not as, as simple as that. We know, for instance, that uh, the poor people, and I'll show just uh, in a moment, that the poor people in, 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 in informal settlements actually pay at least three to ten times higher than those of us who are connected to the network. That's just a basic fact that we've established, and I'll show that on, from, uh, from a case study of uh, the city of Kampala uh, water. Um, and, uh, but then the, the affordability burden analysis goes beyond asking can the poor pay for the services to asking can the poor, can we uh, improve the situation of the poor to bring them to this, uh, 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 a level that is, uh, uh, um, that, that, that does not disadvantage them so, so much. Right. Um, Again, here, just a couple of pictures to show the, 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 the equity principle that if you are receiving water here through that and compare with that one, you're taking a lot more effort. There's a lot more burden to go into that dish and get the water. Uh, and similar to, 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 to some of the, the, the other means of uh, 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 getting water and, and, and all these different forms of receiving water carry different burdens. Some of them are invisible. 
uh, and I'll speak to the uh, invisibility of some of these. For instance, there's invisibility because the poor buy in smaller quantities. And the classical example, or classical argument is that, uh, you know, they buy in, in smaller quantities for a 20 liter in what I'm calling the, the yellow sector, and this is across the continent, you will find that in most informal settlements ac across the continent. They buy 20 liter a day. So they don't pay a bill every month. It's, it's 20 liters, and the 20 liters might cost maybe 50 cents. But if you put that 50 cents together and calculate, and, and, and I've, I've just uh, got an example of that uh, later on, you calculate how much they buy a cubic, how much it costs them for a cubic meter of water, you find that they pay uh, seven, 10 times higher, right? Now, in the context of equity, that ob obviously there's something wrong there, that uh, we, 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 you know, because they buy in smaller quantities, they, they are penalized. And as we sh we'll see just now, the burden, the size of the burden depends on how water is accessed. If water is accessed through the uh, formal service provider, the burden reduces. But the moment you get into the informal water vendors, uh, the, the burden actually goes very, very big up to 10 times. Um, uh, you can see here the picture, in, you know, that th these guys buy every day. They don't pay. But because they buy in small quantities, that burden is invisible to us, especially those of us who pay bills because I pay, you know, 300 uh, at the end of the month as a water bill, and these buy for, you know, 20 cents per container. But actually, they are paying more uh, in terms of the unity cost of water. So that's, that's, that's an invisible, uh, uh, that's one form of invisibility. There's another form of invisibility here uh, that is, uh, the fact that they spend more time, but also more effort to get the water. If I go home, I turn on the tap and the water runs. But look, if you were to spend that much of effort, you go into the beach to get the water for drinking, for washing. If you are spending that much, in terms of equity, that they, they, we, 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 we have something to think about. Here again, there are several issues around. If you're carrying that, for, for most of us, you just turn the tap and the water runs. But if you are carrying it, and if you're carrying it for three kilometers, four kilometers, seven kilometers, several other burdens, and all those are not visible to most of us. Right, the second invisibility is that they spend more time. Uh, imagine if you're on that queue waiting to get water. Of course, I mean, this is a bit of an exaggeration there that uh, maybe there's a water crisis uh, and, and they're lining, lining up, but most people face those queues in informal settlements across the continent. If you are uh, you're at the end of the queue, we can't even see where it ends, you've got to come up here and get the water. How much time does it take? The uh, International Labor Organization and the UNDP last year did a study uh, to estimate the cost of carrying water, the cost of, uh, you know, the, the, the labor that is spent on carrying water in Africa and many other places. And one of the estimates they did was to come to the fact that if we put together the time and the labor spent on water, you can create half a million paid jobs with four, four billion working days. Um, and the estimate also was that, uh, you know, about the, the, the time it takes to go and fetch water, the average trip takes about 10 to 65 minutes for just to go and get the water. Now, uh, if we estimate that that cost to most of us is invisible because um, uh, we're used to water that, that comes. There's also an invisibility of um, paying more per unit. That's what I was speaking to. If you, um, and, and, and this is also a reality in most of the, the cities on the continent, that if you're buying water, if you're in an informal settlement not connected to the network, you're buying water from these guys, you're probably paying five times. If you're buying water from those guys, probably paying five times uh, well, for the cost. So, in terms of five minutes, I'll go very quickly here. In terms of, uh, you know, so what, what we are familiar with is the estimation of what we call the affordability burden. And to estimate the affordability burden, mostly we, we use the macro or the micro. The macro is that you estimate the affordability uh, burden at the national level. The micro, you estimate it at the community or lo local level. Um, and what we need is you need household expenditure or income, and then you need to establish affordability threshold. 
and then um, uh, you need uh, data on household consumption levels um, and then the cost of water that the water tariff uh, I, 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 I resisted to put a water tariff because the water tariff is in a formal sector and in an informal sector there's no uh, uh, water tariff that you buy uh, uh, per, per, con uh, per container as, as, as we'll see and then once you have that then we estimate the ratio of household income the ratio, the, the ratio of the cost of water in household income. Um, the standard uh, ratio that we use often is the WHO uh, ratio of anything. If you spend more than 5% of your household expenditure or household income, then you are above the threshold of uh, water affordability. So, so those who are spending, and if you calculate, if your income is, that, that's a standard. Um, uh, in some cases, but in poor countries, actually, we actually raise the, the threshold to 10% because if we put it at 5%, we will include even the slightly well off. So we, we push the threshold a little bit higher to 10% so that we, we, we screen off those who are well off and, and, and just cater for the, for the, for the poorest. Um, and then after that, once we do that, then we look at uh, which household, in, in terms of if we want to do uh, a policy intervention, we look at the households that have uh, expenditure ratio of water above the threshold, whether it's 10 or 5 percent, and those are the ones that uh, 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 then helped. Um, this is just for the city of Kampala. I was supposed to present the one for some of the informal settlements here, but I haven't finished analyzing the data, so I'll speak to the Kampala one. And uh, it just shows the cost of water. These are for people who are in the former sector connected to the network. The cost of water for consuming the different volumes of water. Uh, we can see that. And then the cost of water in total. So then we estimate the cost of water in total household monthly expenditure per day. And we use day sales here because we couldn't get the, we couldn't get the income for the particular community where this research was done, the, the informal sector. So the proxy here is that the first and second decimals would be a proxy for the poor household. And then we, we look at the ratio. So the ratio of the cost of consuming three cubic meters, six, 10, we, 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 we have different uh, volumes of consumption. Again, the, the idea is that often we think that the poor consume little, but the poor mostly uh, have bigger households, and their consumption does not always fall in the lifeline uh, 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 block. They're always somewhere in the middle. So, but we estimate there are several of them, and you can see that um, at, 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 at three cubic meter, uh, most of these would be, uh, the, 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 the two of them would, would, would be safe, but the moment you move to six, cubic meter and so on, the ratio of water in household cost goes up. Uh, um, and, and this is, uh, I think, the, the most important uh, part of this uh, affordability burden uh, uh, in the sense that it depends on how, where you get the water. For instance, if you get the water from the official provider from a standpipe, for instance, you pay 25 shillings per 20 liter. Uh, if you get it from uh, some of the vendors you pay 50, some you pay 100 shillings, and some cases for the truck uh, uh, vendors who deliver water through trucks, you pay 300 shillings. What that translates into is that per cubic meter, here you are paying 62 dollar, uh, cents. Here, if you are connected to the network, you are paying one dollar, one cent. But if you move down, if you are connected, if you are not connected to the network, you are buying from the vendors, you are paying $7.39 7, $7 per cubic meter, and those connected to the network are only paying $1. And, and you can see that uh, uh, the ratio there is, uh, 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 is much higher. However, and I want to emphasize this, that the, the estimates of affordability burden does not take into account a couple of things that we raised, especially the invisible cost, that we can't cost labor, we can't cost time. In, in this, and at the moment, uh, there, there, there's, there's, there's no, there, there are no uh, mechanisms for costing some of uh, the things like labor. The difference in service levels, in fact, the difference in healthcare, if you're carrying that bucket, 
every, every, every day, three times, four times a day. And for children, the health impact uh, is, is unestimable for, for us. And so the affordability burden, in as much as it makes an effort to bring out the equity uh, um, uh, dimensions of, the, of, of accessing water, it still has uh, a couple of um, uh, weaknesses and, 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 and it would be Im important to, to look into this. In terms, of, uh, yeah, in terms of concluding, just go through there. Uh, one of the, uh, the, the important thing that I want to speak to you is just that the affordability assessment helps us to begin to see um, um, the social justice elements of water. That uh, if, we, if we don't do that assessment of saying how much is everybody paying and how much does that, uh, what, what, what weight does that carry in household income? The, 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 the other point I want to, 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 uh, to look at is that, uh, is what I mentioned just earlier, that we, in, in this assessment, we have to make an effort to sort of cost or incorporate the cost for labor time. And the, IL, uh, the, 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 the ILO and the UNDP paper does that, develops a mechanism where we can say, you know, how do we estimate the, the, the cost of water? Um, and, in, and, and for policy uh, reasons, I think we, once we have done the, the estimate and screen the, 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 the different groups, then uh, in terms of equity, we focus more on those who have uh, or who, who carry the highest burden. Thank you.